Hi everybody, a very very good morning. Uh, we are almost ready to start. We just have a few minutes to go and uh, we will be getting into this session on uh, baby bonding and baby bonding specifically when your baby is in your womb, right? So uh, just a little bit more patience and uh, while we're waiting, uh, we do have a chat uh, window which uh, in case if you'd like to put in a, a few questions, I would be happy to answer them uh, through this chat. Right, so I'm going to open up my chat window and um, let you put in your questions so that you can, uh, you know, get, uh, we can start getting to know each other. So I think I have a chat window and I have a questions window. So you can, uh, I think, uh, let me just put, a, yes. So I have started off a chat in the chat section. If you can put your any questions that you would like to ask me while we are waiting. We have about five minutes left to start yet. So we could answer any questions related to pregnancy. Um, if you have any, uh, any food related questions, anything that you want to know for the next few minutes, um, I'm available to answer them for you. Okay, I think I'm seeing some questions in the question section. Okay, hold on. Let me just, this is, okay, I understand you're not able to type on chat window. Sorry, I did not realize that. Um, so in the first trimester, uh, it is really advisable that you don't start exercises unless you are completely used to it and there is no uh, incidence of spotting or bleeding during your pregnancy. Um, also, one more thing that you have to keep in mind is that in the first trimester, the scan that is done is very, very uh, basic and we don't get too much information out of it. It's only at the end of the 12th week that a detailed scan is done, which will get us uh, a proper picture of how the uterus and the pregnancy is. So keeping that in perspective, we recommend starting exercises only after this scan result has been achieved. Till then, if you're used to it, you could continue walking. Again, if there is no uh, complication in the pregnancy, like no spotting, no pain, no cramps. Um, <laughs> so uh, we actually had a full webinar on labor pains uh, just two weeks ago. Um, uh, but basically just to explain, uh, labor pain uh, is like menstrual cramps, uh, but much more intense. Uh, they come and go at periodic rhythmic intervals, which means that you will feel a cramp, it will be very intense, it will last for a few seconds and it will disappear. As it becomes more uh, progressive, uh, the contractions or the spasms can last for uh, longer, sometimes even 90 seconds at a stretch. Um, don't worry, you will come to know what labor pain feels like for sure. Um, so uh, most first-time mothers will feel baby movements anywhere between week 18 to 24. It's normal uh, to feel the first movements between that time. Uh, most babies at that time when they kick or they move, it will be literally like flutters, like little butterflies, as if you've got gas bubbles. Uh, so it's not recommended to do counts at that point of time. Between weeks 24 to 28, uh, the movements become very, very strong. And uh, they're very easy to identify, put into a pattern and start counting. So uh, somewhere around that time when you are uh, getting fixed movements and you are able to form a pattern is when you start counting uh, the baby movements. Uh, how to deal with edema? Now, swelling uh, can happen in multiple places. Uh, swelling in the feet only. If it's only in the feet, it's probably due to standing or sitting in one position for a long time. You should uh, keep moving around. You should elevate your feet and all of those things. Uh, the second thing is if there's swelling in other areas, like if your face is feeling puffed up, your nose looks like a large potato, your finger rings don't fit you then uh, it could also be related to blood pressure. So whenever you have abnormal swelling, you should always first get your blood pressure checked. If blood pressure is normal, uh, then the next thing that you should focus on is some exercise, which will help to aid in circulation, reduce salt intake, avoid packaged foods, 
anything which has a best before and expiration date is uh, going to have a lot of salt in it. So I would suggest that you completely avoid, uh, you know, your uh, packaged foods, etc. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can increase protein by obviously increasing your protein intake in a dietary uh, manner. And uh, vegetarian food is obviously a little difficult to increase protein intake. But a simple rule that I would suggest that you follow is that you should take a protein food with every food that you eat, right? So suppose if I'm going to eat breakfast, then I have my mid-morning snack, then I have my lunch, then I have my... Uh, two mid-evening snacks and I have my dinner and maybe I have something at bedtime. So I'm eating six to seven times a day. I should have something from the protein group each of those times. I'll give you a rough example. Uh, with my breakfast, I could uh, maybe eat eggs. Uh, with my mid-morning, when I'm having my coconut water, I could eat some nuts. With my lunch, I have my dal or my rajma or my chula or whatever it is. Um, in the evening, I can have, uh, you know, maybe my uh, Trepton biscuits, uh, some seeds, etc. Uh, with my second snack, I could make a paneer sandwich. I could make a sprouts bowl. Uh, again, for my dinner, I could have my dal or my chicken or my fish or whatever it is I want. And at bedtime, I can have a cup of milk. So when you follow something like this, you will end up getting the required uh, protein intake. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, today's session now. Uh, we are almost on time and we have so many of you who are already in here. So let's uh, move on and let's talk about uh, baby bonding, right? So we are able to see my screen, right? Let's go. So the first thing I would like to say along with welcome moms and dads is congratulations. It's an amazing feeling to, uh, you know, be pregnant, to be feeling that uh, new life growing inside you and all of those amazing things, right? Uh, so that is something which is pregnancy and that is what pregnancy is all about. So being pregnant, I think all of you will agree with me on this. It's new, isn't it? So it's a new beginning. It's a new experience. It's a new life. For those of you who have already met me in the previous webinars or who know a little bit about me, I uh, am a mom as well. I have two kids. And uh, mine are, of course, older. So I have a, a you know, a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old. And uh, I still feel I'm on the roller coaster of newness. Because with my children, I learn something new every single day. So welcome to the roller coaster of parenting now. So during pregnancy, um, you know, and I had these same questions when I was expecting my firstborn as well, right? My first pregnancy. These are some of the things that you're probably thinking about. You have a lot of doubts and queries. Like, you know, I mean, I saw so many questions already in the, in the question set, right? So whether it is your sleeping position, your exercise, your diet, uh, you know, uh, am I supposed to be sitting like this, standing like this? There are so many doubts and queries that you have. Small, small things, right, which you normally would never think about, you suddenly start thinking. Should I eat papaya or no? Like, you know, 10 people have told me don't eat papaya. But it is a healthy fruit. So all of that is part and parcel of pregnancy. And then come myths and misconceptions. Which of course, you know, our country is really famous for. So whether it's the shape of the stomach, which is going to say whether it's a boy or a girl, which is not true by the way. Or the dark line which runs up your abdomen which says that, oh, if the line is present, then it's a boy. And if there's no line, it's a girl. Again, total myth because uh, the line that appears is called the linear Niagara and it is a hormonal change. Having white foods is going to give you a fair baby. Again, complete myth. That's not something which is true, right? Because... Sometimes what happens is that these myths and misconceptions end up harming us more. I had one mother who was told this. As soon as you wake up in the morning, have something white. And because she couldn't find anything and she couldn't make anything uh, healthy for herself, 
what she started doing was every morning she would have a spoon of sugar because it was white and uh, that was her hope of getting a white baby so it was a little bit more harmful for her than anything else then there's nutrition right we always think about our food somehow during pregnancy we become more conscious about our food and about our dietary habits we are also thinking about who we are going to deliver with which doctor and where would we deliver with so so many of us have so many choices whether it's large hospitals small maternity homes do i want a water birth am i going to be delivering at home with a midwife so there are so many such thoughts that could be there the next is your dealing with advice so the moment that pregnant belly is visible people start giving you tons of advice so you don't need to worry about uh, people giving you advice you need to trust your instinct and you need to discuss this with your doctor as a parent obviously you're planning money and finances babies are expensive isn't it i'm sure you're realizing that even now in terms of your shopping in terms of your requirements and doctors visits and etc this is only going to escalate shops are closed now but whenever we are able to we will definitely want to be buying all those cute things for the baby so shopping for the baby is also on your mind if you're a working mom you're thinking about your career and of course you want your husband involved in this entire process so now i have a thought for you and i'd like you to think about this for just a minute when in all of these things you know when you are thinking about all of these things when do you actually become a parent do you become a parent when first do you, when you plan the baby when you are planning your conception okay i think now it's the right time do you become a parent when you see those two lines on your pee stick do you become a parent when you feel the first movements do you become a parent when you first hold your baby in your arms or do you think you become a parent when your baby gives you the first smile right five options and let me tell you if you are thinking about these there is no right or wrong answer all the answers are correct because all of us are different all of us have a different personality type so keeping that in perspective it's really important that you understand that anything wherever you feel is right is when you become a parent i have some interesting facts to share about babies with you when you see this image on the screen i'm sure the first thought that comes to mind is is that a lizard but no that's a human baby as young as 3 weeks okay so this is 3 weeks of conception at a time where you don't even know that you are pregnant you may not even have missed your first period yet right so this is the human baby the baby's heart starts beating at about day 25 of conception but brain wave activity has been recorded as early as 21 days I mean, imagine at a time when we were partying, when we were probably doing everything, we didn't even know that we were pregnant. The baby's brain has already started functioning as early as 21 days. So now think, whenever the brain is functioning, right? You and me, we have a functional brain. We can think, we can feel. we have emotions we have reactions right we feel happy we feel sad we have memories we remember things and we understand things so now what did i ask you to think the baby's brain in your stomach has become functional or has started functioning as early as 21 days so that means all of these things has started happening the picture that i've shown you on the screen and just keep that thought in mind is that of a brain cell and all of those pipes coming out of it are connections okay so just keep that image in mind of the brain cell with a lot of connections and i'm going to tell you how that is going to be relevant 
to how your baby's brain develops. So even on an ultrasound, when you go for your initial sonograms, the brain and the nervous system become apparent at four weeks. So when conception happens, the cell divides, there's one part which becomes the placenta, the other part which becomes the baby, further division, one becomes the brain, the rest becomes the body, all of that happens. Our brain is very dynamic. It will always adapt. See, today, simple, right? I mean, all of us in this COVID-19 situation, we have all adapted, isn't it? We're sitting at home, we're working from home, we're taking all these classes at home, we're doing our housework, everything. So we have adapted as far as our work is concerned, our life is concerned, we have changed. We may be grumbling, we may be worried, but we have adapted. And the same thing happens with the baby's brain as well. If you see at five months, the cerebral hemispheres are as smooth as billiard balls. Okay? And at nine months, they look like two halves of a walnut. I'm going to show you the next slide so that you can, you know, kind of get an idea of what I'm trying to say. Look at this. When you see the brain image at 25 weeks, what does it look like? It's so tiny and it's so smooth. Now it needs to grow because it needs more space. But because there's no space, our head is a big size, we can't really have this huge watermelon on our head. The brain starts folding to create more surface area. In the third trimester, DHA, that is something you may have heard about, right? Omega-3, a big word. The DHA content of the brain is also going to increase by about three to five times. And this is the time when protein becomes a very important part of your daily diet. This is how brain development happens. So stay with me. I'm going to come to how we can help this as well. But once you understand what's happening, it will be a lot easier for you to incorporate all the other tips. In the womb, in the first 3 to 20 weeks, the brain makes 500,000 cells every minute. Can you do the math? I have not done it. 500,000 cells a minute, right? And there are so many minutes in an entire day. This process is called neurogenesis. This is the brain forming itself. In the second half of pregnancy, that is 20 weeks and beyond, the neurons start connecting. Remember, I showed you the picture of the neuron and those connections. They start connecting and they start wiring together. So this is called synaptogenesis. Each neuron, and now that's another interesting fact, will make 15,000 to 1 lakh connections. To make a complete brain, your baby has to make 1.8 million connections per second. Okay? But only 17% of synaptogenesis happens in the womb. 83% will happen after birth, but in the first few years. So that's something which is important to remember. So today we're going to cover what is going to be 17% of brain growth and cell development and neuron connections. You have to remember that the neurons that the baby has in old age, that means what you and me have today, this the same neurons that were formed during development in the womb. They do not age and die like other cells in the body. Right? So um, the skin that you're seeing is completely fresh. It's not what I was born with because it sheds, new cells replace it. The same thing happens with my blood cells, etc. etc. So keeping that in perspective is really, really important that they do not age and die like other cells in the body. So we need to create lots of neurons, especially now during pregnancy. Now let's see what we can do, okay? By about 20 weeks, because this is the time when the synaptogenesis is happening. The baby is starting to make those connections. And connections are always made with experiences, okay? So the first thing that you need to know is touch. As early as one month, the touch is felt by your embryo, felt by your baby, right? 
So the baby can actually feel things over here by one month in the womb. And that is why this area is very important to you after the baby is born. So when you latch the baby on, when you put your baby to the breast, when the nipple tickles right here, that is what is sensitive to the baby because this develops first. This is what is essential, important for the baby. Post 20 weeks, the baby will start responding to external touch. So when you kind of, you know, pat on your abdomen, when you kind of, you know, uh, have some kind of, maybe you place some ice, place a warm pack, the baby will start responding to all these sensations which are provided externally as well, right? Um, there have been a lot of studies done where, you know, the baby responds even in an amniocentesis where the insertion of a needle is done for a test and the baby knows that this is not safe and starts moving away from the needle. So touching your stomach, embracing your stomach, making your stomach feel warm, um, giving it some loving embraces is something that you should start from 20 weeks of pregnancy. The baby's sight also starts developing at about four weeks post conception. In the second and third trimester, we have seen babies respond to activities and, you know, kind of blink, pupils are dilating, all of those things they can start doing. When you flash a light on your abdomen, the baby might move away from it or the baby might turn towards it. So these are responses that the baby will show. Most of these circuits will get completed in the first year after birth. So what happens is that the baby is going to start looking at things better once the baby is born. At birth, the vision is not very well developed. It is slightly hazy, they can't see very far. So all of these will get completed in the first year after birth. Your baby can also hear and this can be felt as one of the initial senses uh, that are developed. However, your baby will respond to sounds only in the third trimester. So when you are entering your third trimester, which is about 28 weeks, is when you can start talking to your baby. Baby can hear mom's voice in the stomach and other sounds as well, although these are muffled. And remember, newborns have a very powerful memory for sounds, which they have encountered while they are still in the womb. In the third trimester, the, t the smell sense also becomes very, very prominent because the protective plug which was blocking the nasal passages falls off and it is replaced with snot. So if a mom's diet, for example, is very rich in garlic or there's a special perfume that your mother, that you wear, that is something which will become a strong memory for your baby as well. So the placenta allows for smells to permeate into the womb as well. Taste also develops at about eight weeks post conception. We have seen babies do this, right? Swallowing patterns. Um, I'll, I'll share a quick uh, experiment story with you, right? Not that I want you to do this, but it's a very interesting fact which demonstrates this. So there was a study which was done and mothers were divided into two groups. One was the control group, the other was the subjects group. The control group was given a normal diet and everything was kept standard and the swallowing patterns of the fetus were recorded. How many times the baby swallows in one hour after the mother has eaten a meal, right? Now in the, in the study group, the other group, the mothers were given a more special diet, which was more sweeter, right? So they were given a sweet diet. Now babies seem to prefer a sweeter taste. So we realized and the study kind of showed that babies were swallowing much more amniotic fluid when the diet was sweeter. Doesn't mean that this is healthy, but what it means to say is 
that the tastes of the food do come into the amniotic fluid and because of this eating healthier foods is really really advisable so think about this if you eat your spinach and you eat all your fruits and vegetables at this point of time and your baby in the womb is developing a taste for these things isn't that something great because post delivery when you want your baby to eat all the healthy things and you're weaning and giving solids and you have a toddler you do want a baby who's not fussy at all isn't it there are various factors which will influence your baby's development so there's the environment i can't do anything about it i mean look at it this way right now my environment has covid 19 can i do something about it besides trying to protect myself no that's all i can do there is your nutrition which you can definitely take care of make sure that you are eating healthy your stress levels instead of worrying and panicking and etc instead of kind of you know being one of those really hyper mothers you could try to be more calmer and and relaxed and etc and the exposure which is how you interact even with your baby in the womb what kind of positivity you share with your baby in the womb and what kind of positive uh, structures you have around your life is also very important There are five areas of development that all of us as psychologists would be focused on and these are the areas that I'm going to teach you about now how can i influence all these areas of my baby in my womb so there's language social emotional cognitive gross and fine motor skills and physical development out of these five i can work with four I can't teach your baby how to walk and run and crawl and sit up and do all those things right so gross and fine motor development I can't do right now but the other four I can actually give you ideas and suggestions on how to help so the first is language skills remember we said that babies are able to remember respond in the third trimester they start picking up language skills in the last 10 weeks in the womb what we would suggest is talk to your baby sing to your baby play soothing music now you have to remember that the baby is hearing what the mother is hearing i have had mothers who come and ask me this question i want my baby to learn mandarin i want my baby to learn french what if i kind of you know take headphones play uh, mandarin tapes and etc or i want my baby to learn beethoven and all of those fancy things and i place it on my stomach and that's fine and the baby will be listening and i can go about my day to day activities that doesn't work because the baby still doesn't have a perception the baby still doesn't have the understanding that is needed so baby is going to hear what you hear baby is going to feel what you feel Right now, let me give you a simple example. Suppose I go to the theater, and I've gone there to watch a horror movie. I'm the mother who can sit in the theater and laugh at the screen and say, "Oh my God, what makeup! What is this have?" And I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. Right? That is not going to bother my pregnancy or my baby at all. On the other side, if I'm going to the theater. and i am uh, looking at the horror movie and i'm like oh, and i'm doing this and i'm getting scared i'm cringing that is going to affect my baby as well right so it depends on what you are feeling not on what is being show okay the other thing that we have done this in class as well i realized this uh, early on when i used to take exercise classes you know when someone does an exercise routine we always count right 1 2 3 4 5 so we have those counts we always do that uh when i had a mother come in with a newborn and she was part of my regular exercise class the baby was really fussy the baby was crying a lot so the mother was really anxious so i told her let me try so i picked up the baby and i don't know why it just happened i started counting the same tone of voice the same numbers 
and the baby stopped the baby paused the baby wanted to listen because the baby recognized those sounds after that i started telling mothers and i'm going to tell you this as well every day at a fixed time when you want to rest when you want to kind of relax when you want to kind of you know switch off maybe just before you want to sleep you can place your hand on the womb on your stomach so that kind of you know makes the baby feel warm so let me just kind of you know uh move this a little bit so yeah so you have your hand like this close your eyes say hello baby and then start singing some favorite soft tune of your choice right anything that you like it could be baba black sheep but something which is a little soothing something which is a little relaxing it could be a bollywood song it could be a hollywood song it could be just some humming tune etc what i would suggest is that you should do this every day don't just do it once or twice do it every day starting from the 30th week and you can then realize that later on when the baby is born that same tune that same tone that same song can actually help to calm your fussy baby can actually help your baby to go to sleep at a particular time so you should try this starting from the 30th week onwards every single day place your hands on your stomach give your baby that embrace and sing right doesn't matter if you don't have a great voice nobody really cares right please don't be worried about what people are thinking nobody really is going to be bothered by it okay the other area that we can focus on is social and emotional development you have to remember that babies don't recognize words right they don't know if you are saying oh my god this is so horrible no they don't understand that or if you're feeling exceptionally happy and like oh my god this is such an amazing day they don't understand horrible and amazing but what they understand is that when you are in that horrible statement you're feeling stressed when you're saying that happy amazing statement you're feeling happy right so they they understand the feeling they understand the emotion and our emotions are connected to our hormones right so if i'm feeling happy if i'm feeling loved if i'm feeling content i'm making a lot of oxytocin right a lot of oxytocin and this oxytocin is in my blood stream and it is flowing to the baby exactly that's just what happens so most important thing for you to remember is just that that try and keep your emotions in check the mother's emotional state is what affects the baby's emotional state babies are stressed out if the mother is stressed out babies born to stressed out anxious hyper mothers are generally stressed out anxious and hyper and these are the babies who will tend to have feeding issues sleeping issues too much crying issues all of that and then there is always that you know calm happy baby absolutely easy to manage you know turn around and look at the mother invariably it will be a calm happy relaxed chilled stressed out mother right so that's something that you have to keep in mind then comes your nutrition right uh, the baby always feeds from the mother there's no other source of nutrition the tastes are developing in the womb so feeding habits tastes all develop in the womb the reason why we ask you to eat every 2 hours when you are awake is because the baby is feeding constantly we want to maintain your blood sugar levels we don't want your blood sugar levels to plummet and rise and spike and drop we don't want that because this affects metabolism if i eat a bag of chips trust me i'm going to have a half kilo weight gain tomorrow my metabolism is really slow but some people have this amazing metabolism they can eat anything and they don't gain weight at all that's metabolism right so by making sure that you eat healthy every 2 hours when you are awake you can actually give the baby a higher metabolism obesity is something which is also developed in the womb the 
blueprint or the cells are laid down in the womb. So again, making sure that you eat often, eat every two hours, don't go hungry, will help to prevent obesity as well. Lifestyle related diseases are always related to two things and you can do this check. I did it once, right? I went looking on to Google and every disease that I could put up had two main causes, stress and obesity, right? So making sure that your uh, diet is healthy is going to ensure that your baby does not have lifestyle related diseases like heart disease, um, kidney failures, diabetes, blood pressure, all of those things. Those are your tsunamis and cyclones of human life, isn't it? This is a very simple meal plan, uh, which we can say should be followed during pregnancy. Make sure you pick healthy carbohydrates, so unrefined grains. Try and do six servings per day. Eat a lot of vegetables, all fresh and seasonal as many different colors as you can, about 300 grams per day. The same thing goes for fruits, fresh and seasonal, as many colors as you can find, which is why I call them rainbow diet. So minimum 200 grams per day. I discussed protein as one of the questions that came in in the beginning of the session. So including things like dolls, legumes, meat, egg, soy, nuts, seeds. Minimum three servings per day is required. Milk protein, about 500 ml per day. It's not necessary that you have only milk. You could have curds, paneer, lassi. You have all of those options. We do need some fats, but we do not need it in excess. So about six teaspoons in the entire day, right? If you want to have ghee, it's included in this six teaspoons. You can't have excessive ghee. Over and above all this, you need to make sure that you have minimum two liters of water every day. That's mandatory. All of this food needs to get digested, right? And your baby is also living in amniotic fluid. So the amniotic fluid level needs to get replaced too. We'll talk a little bit about your relationships and how they affect your baby's well-being. Look at this slide. There are three types of people in our life. People whom we love. People whom we can't do without, people whom we don't like, right? We can categorize the people that we know in these three categories. The circles that I have put around these things are the time that we spend with these people. So in an ideal scenario, I should be spending the maximum amount of time with people whom I love and the least amount of time with people whom I don't like. But in reality, this is what we end up doing. We spend the maximum amount of time with people whom we don't like. If I ask moms that, you know, who makes you the most happy? I don't want you to answer it, but most of you will probably say, my husband, I love spending time with him. But really, how much time do you spend with your husband? Counting the time that you sleep next to him on the bed is not counted, okay? Because you're both asleep, so you're not really spending time. The rest of the day, we are all so busy that we don't spend time with the people we love. But maybe you're not very fond of your boss. Maybe you're not very fond of your co-workers. Maybe you're not very fond of your mother-in-law, whatever. Okay, not really putting words there. But you end up spending more time with all of these people than the people who make you happy. So think about it. If you can automatically just change your life to this, you will become a more happier person because if you are around the person who makes you happy, you will automatically be smiling, isn't it? Now, it's very difficult to tell a mother that please be happy all the time. It's not possible, right? So every morning when you wake up and you're, you know, brushing your teeth, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, which mom am I? Am I the mom who is smiling or am I the mom who is this? What am I feeling today? Just today. It doesn't need to be every day of your life for the next nine months. That's not the idea. It's today. Right? So if you find yourself 
I'm feeling bright and perky and I'm happy and it's a great day and the birds are singing and the sun is shining type of a feeling. Then you're good. Great. Move on. Get on with your day. But if you're feeling low and down in the dumb, I don't want to get up, I don't want to go out, I don't want, you know, if you're getting that kind of a feeling, then you need to decide how can you change that. And only for that day, I'm not asking you to do it forever. What is it that you can do on that day to make yourself happier? What can you do that day to make yourself more brighter? Maybe meet a friend. Maybe ask your husband to take you out for dinner. Maybe get a massage. Something which makes you feel brighter. Because what happens? Oxytocin rushes when you feel happier. And that flows to the baby which makes the baby happier. Isn't it? Here are some images from the womb. Okay? Take a look. You have the baby actually crying in the womb. This, has be, this is an actual picture taken from the womb ultrasound. You have a baby smiling. Now, wouldn't you want your baby to be doing this most of the time? That's really important. That's a baby yawning. So, I'm trying to show you that life actually exists in the womb. It's not that your baby is just there. Life exists and it's very, very alive. Look at this. So cute, isn't it? Twins. They actually interact with each other. So one is kissing the other, right? But they punch each other as well. And we've seen that behavior outside as well. Generally, if one of the twins is more aggressive, more like, you know, out there, they exhibit the same behavioral patterns even after birth. So babies are feeling and thinking and, you know, doing all of those things in the womb. So your baby is kicking, you know that. Your baby is stretching, so you feel the difference, right? When your baby is kicking and it's like, all of those kind of movements. When your baby stretches, you have this nice, lazy ballet kind of movement. We've seen ultrasound images where the baby's got a hold of the umbilical cord and is kind of, you know, playing around with it. Babies will also suck their thumb in the womb. They're doing all of these things. And twins are hugging, kicking, touching, and playing with each other. You have to remember that the mother's environment is the baby's environment. So if you create a happy space around yourself and you are in a happy state of mind, your baby is automatically going to be in a happy state of mind. It will help you to be more connected to your baby. It will help you and your baby to kind of, you know, be in sync with each other, which will help during pregnancy and even post delivery. I'm going to share a few facts about stem cells as well with you and you can put in your questions in the question window for the session so I can answer them once I'm done with these next few slides. Uh, there has been a major breakthrough as far as even COVID-19 is concerned in stem cell therapy. Stem cell therapy has been approved for clinical trials. Multiple options are being looked into for treatment and vaccinations for the COVID-19. So trials obviously take time, we understand that. But the potential of mesenchymal stem cells, which we get from the umbilical cord blood for treating COVID-19, has shown initial success. And US FDA has given approval that, okay, these can be explored. There are 40 plus clinical trials right now which are exploring treatment and vaccination options. And out of this, 23, that's a huge number, more than 50% are being used doing cord blood and cord tissue. And uh, the details of the trials have been placed on your screen. These are independent trials. They're not being done by uh, any particular company which has a vested interest in this uh, space. There has been some treatment which has the, the initial success that we've seen. There have been some treatment using umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells where the cases have actually recovered. 
and after this there have been seven more patients which have been treated successfully. There are other clinical trials using umbilical cord blood for various other states and conditions as well. But, um, you know, they're all under progress and uh, there is a lot of development that, are, that is happening in this cord blood and um, stem cell space. The question that you have to ask yourself is that would you benefit? The option of banking your umbilical stem cells, the cord blood, mesenchymal stem cells and even the hematopoietic stem cells is available. These are ready to use, ready to access. And you can actually have the option of easy collection and preservation for a long term. There are a few tips that you should keep in mind when you are choosing a stem cell bank. Always ensure that the bank is financially viable and stable. You don't want somebody who's going to disappear, right, in the next few years because umbilical cord stem cell banking is done for lifetime. So you want someone which who's financially stable and there should be insurance backup. International presence is important because you may want to, God forbid, if needed, go to another country for treatment. If you have globally accredited facility, that is also going to help because the treatment in other countries with your sample will be definitely possible. There is a special offer for all of you and it comes to you from Hungry Brain and Cord Life. You, at the end of this session, thank you for participating in this session, are going to receive a gift voucher of rupees 1000 from Hungry Brain. Hungry Brain is a brand which creates a lot of sensory stimulation kits for new babies, right? Um, we spoke about all the kind of development that we can do in the womb. And I told you that only 17% of the brain development is happening in the womb, but 83% happens post-delivery. So that 83%, how do I influence that? That is something that the Hungry Brain Sensory Stimulation Kit can help you with. So um, you will be receiving this voucher in your email. Um, in about uh, 48 hours after this session. I am going to put my details on the screen as well. So my website is www.baby360degrees.com. You can uh, sign up or kind of, you know, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And my handle is at baby360degrees. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is the Pregnancy Coach by Baby360degrees which constantly has a lot of videos and information being uploaded, which you can access um, at any point of time, right? Um, thank you very much for being a patient audience. And I'm going to start looking at the questions now. Um, feeling drowsy in pregnancy is completely normal, Shivani. It is something which uh, happens, especially in the first trimester, because that is when the baby is... Uh, you know, developing um, so much uh, in terms of growth and etc. So the drowsy feeling is because of that. Yes, you can type your questions here. Uh, 26 weeks pregnant and I feel the baby moves strongly. Um, <laughs> you know, if at any given point of time you feel the fetal movements are less, of course, you should definitely get in touch with your doctor. But what you can try is uh, make sure that you have something sweet, especially in the liquid form. Uh, lie down and do a lot of deep breathing. Hopefully, the movements will resume to the same extent. Uh, if you don't feel movements in the next half an hour, 45 minutes after you've tried this, you should get in touch with your doctor. Uh, you can soak your feet and legs in Epsom salt with warm water in it. That will help to improve circulation. Uh, but even warm water on its own will help. Uh, for 20 weeks, amniotic fluid is low. Please discuss this with your doctor. This is obviously not a medical forum. Uh, you should uh, understand from your doctor how you can uh, improve your amniotic fluid levels. We do recommend making sure that you have enough water 
but that's not a solution if it is low, right? You should definitely get in touch with the doctor for this. Uh, high protein foods, uh, foods with a lot of omega-3. So things like flax seeds, uh, walnuts, all of these are excellent foods for uh, enhancing the omega-3 levels. Other things are olive oil, um, you know, you can have olives, uh, you can have, if you eat fish, you can include fish in your diet. And of course, you can also take an omega-3 supplement. Uh, what are the steps in the coming 29 weeks? I'm really sorry. That's a very, very vast question. Uh, you probably might consider, uh, you know, reading a book on this and also uh, consider a prenatal class. That will help. And then you can also kind of, you know, follow all my social media and uh, YouTube channel for this. Yeah, I know the chat window, my mistake. Um, twin pregnancy, ma'am, you have to remember that you have to be prepared that you are going to deliver at about 35, 36 weeks. Generally, twin pregnancies don't last till 40 weeks because the weight goes on increasing. So it's really difficult to sustain the pregnancy too long. Keeping that in perspective, uh, you should uh, just uh, make sure that you eat well, eat healthy so that the baby growth is optimal. The second thing that you have to keep in mind is uh, take it easy. Don't uh, stress yourself out. Don't, uh, you know, overdo things. Exercise also, if it's allowed by the doctor, should be in moderation so that you don't put extra pressure on your lower body, which could then encourage the delivery to happen earlier. Um, healthy weight range, my dear, during pregnancy is going to depend on your uh, weight that you started with. So if you started your weight, at, I mean your pregnancy at an ideal weight as per your height and body structure, then we consider that a good weight gain is between 10 to 12 kilos. If you started underweight, then chances of your gaining more is there. If you started overweight, then chances of your gaining less is there. Uh, if you have a twin pregnancy, obviously you'll gain more. So uh, average is 10 to 12 kilos if your uh, starting weight is a healthy weight. Uh, um, so typically till the umbilical cord stump falls off, you should only sponge bath your baby and not, uh, you know, uh, give a proper bath. A massage should be done by the parents. It's very good for bonding. It's very good for touch therapy. So no outside person should be involved in the uh, infant massage. Uh, you can have dark chocolate during pregnancy, that's fine, but obviously again in moderation because the worry is not the dark or the milk chocolate. The worry is that uh, we don't want you to have excessive sugar. Uh, so a little bit, a small piece here and there is okay. Always everything in moderation. Uh, in 21 weeks, uh, yes, you can sleep. See, actually, honestly, guys, sleeping position in during pregnancy is as per your comfort. If you are sleeping on your back, even in the third trimester, and you are not breathless and you're comfortable and not getting back pain, then it's okay. Because that means that the oxygen supply to the baby is still optimal and you don't need to worry about it. Okay. Uh, however, if you start feeling uncomfortable, then you have to worry and you have to sleep either on your left or your right side. Uh, the comfort can come by using extra pillows. So you do get a lot of body pillows, pregnancy pillows in the market, which you can probably help you to feel comfortable while sleeping on one of your sides. It's normal that you should be feeling baby movements all through the day. That's great. Back pain after every meal. Maybe it's due to your sitting posture. Maybe you're sitting for too long in one position to eat your meal. So you should probably put some cushions, find a more comfortable chair, um, sit in a very comfortable position uh, to make sure that you're eating well. I mean, uh, sitting well, posture has to be corrected. Uh, spotting during pregnancy is not normal. If there is spotting, it should be immediately reported to the doctor. Umbilical cord around the baby's neck is normal. It doesn't bother the baby during the pregnancy phase. So what happens is uh, the baby in your womb is 
twisting, turning, somersaulting, doing all of those things, right? And uh, due to this, uh, the baby is going to wrap the cord and unwrap the cord. So we can't help it. We have to see what happens during labor. If the cord is wrapped too tightly or if there are multiple loops that are not that have not uh, unraveled or they're becoming tight, then it might result in a surgical birth, but that can be decided only at the time of labor. We don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, minimum 10 movements uh, in an hour is what you have to count. Babies are going to have sleepy days and they're going to have wakeful days. So overall, if the growth is fine, then we don't need to worry about the number of movements. I mean, the um, some days less, some days more, that's understandable. Exercises. Um, well, again, uh, you know, we actually did have a session on exercises as well um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, you should very ideally you know first get permission from your doctor and the safest exercise that you can start is walking that would be highly recommended uh, since you don't have access to a supervised exercise format yet if it is possible for you to get into some online pregnancy class which can guide you with the exercises that would also be helpful um, the headaches if you're having them every day and especially happening in the morning then obviously you're not sleeping well just make sure that your uh, sleeping environment is comfortable in terms of temperature, position, mattress, pillow, uh, all of those things. Uh, you're not getting up too often. If you find that you're getting up again and again, uh, maybe it's due to frequent urination. So have less water in the second uh, just before you sleep and uh, all of those things. Use a lot of pillows so that you are feeling comfortable and you don't have back pain. Um, that does seem to be if, you're, if the headaches are only in the morning, I would feel that it is because of your uh, lack of sleep uh, or lack of comfortable sleep uh, at night. Uh, prenatal iron, calcium are essential and they are started at about 12 to 16 weeks of pregnancy. I would suggest taking a multivitamin also and uh, the fourth thing that I always ask my mothers to take is omega-3 in the third trimester. Um, yes, you can have a little bit of tulsi. It's a herb. Uh, again, everything in moderation because uh, anything in excess could have adverse reactions. The problem with herbs is that we don't have too many research studies or data for it. You know that we can say that yes, this is fine and yes, that is not fine. So therefore, we always recommend that um, try and stay away from herbs if possible. But if you are taking something which is relatively considered safe like Tulsi, then you can have it uh, in moderation, just very little bit. Um, I, uh, I can't answer very specific questions about current weight, calculated weight. This is a webinar, ma'am. So generic questions is what I can take care of. Uh, yes, obviously if you uh, have been sleeping for the night and you're waking up in the morning, your bladder is full, so you'll definitely be more. Uh, nosebleeds are common during pregnancy because of the hormonal changes. The nasal passages tend to be a little blocked and uh, that can result in, uh, you know, the, the nasal passages being uh, completely, it might feel blocked, you might feel as if you have a, a little cold. Uh, and then it also can result in most pains. So it's fairly common in pregnancy. It's not something that we really worry about. Uh, you're getting the pins and needles in your hand uh, when you're sleeping because you're sleeping in one position. So many times your hand may be under your head, under your body. So the blood flow and uh, circulation will get restricted, which is why you have that feeling of pins and needles. So when you wake up in the morning, you should kind of, you know, just... Do something like this, which will help the circulation to start off and you should feel comfortable. Um, since, uh, you know, there is a diagnosis of gestational diabetes, chances of an early delivery are quite high, which is why the doctors recommended steroids to mature the lungs. Um, this is something that you will have to trust your doctor with because if uh, we allow the pregnancy to carry through with gestational diabetes and for some reason it gets uncontrolled it 
can result in uh, complications and um, uh, you know something which is more serious uh, than what we would like to even talk about so please trust your doctor if you are not comfortable i would suggest get a second opinion also so that you kind of you know feel more comfortable and confident in uh, making the decision the placenta is uh, active right from the very beginning but uh, we normally say that uh, you know it takes over the role of uh, uh, producing all the hormones and etc right from the second month itself of pregnancy till then the mother's hormones will be doing a lot of the support aspect uh, itching uh, should be reported to your doctor ma'am because it could be due to a liver function problem and uh, this can be a complication of pregnancy it is very controllable it's not something to be alarmed about but it needs to be controlled so please can connect with your doctor for this itching issue don't just put powder and lotions and all to try to control it it is an internal uh, requirement yes uh, all types of seeds are safe to eat flax seeds pumpkin sunflower can go ahead uh amniotic fluid levels are reported in your ultrasound uh the ultrasound will also tell you uh if the levels are low or not and whether uh, any action needs to be taken all right so um i think we are now at uh, beyond time and uh, we have answered most of the questions as well uh the idea of the questions was that it has to be related to the topics so that I'll still try to answer other questions as well i'm really sorry if i haven't been able to get to your question uh but keep in track keep in touch um you know the codlab team will be in touch with you so you can always let them know that you would be interested to know about any future sessions that they are conducting and that they are having so that is something that you kind of you know have to be uh, alert with because other topics will be covered in other sessions uh even by other trainers etc so you should uh, uh want to put yourself on uh, onto the mailing list uh, as well okay all right so great uh thank you very much uh, have a great day it's been amazing talking to you this morning and uh, just wait for that connect from code live in about 48 hours you should be getting uh you know the link for the recording for this session and you should also be uh getting your hungry brain voucher right all right thank you so much have a very very great day